Skullgirls. I'm pretty sure you know what this game is, and if you don't, well, you suck. Skullgirls is an awesome 2D fighting game that's available on consoles and PC, but they also released a version designed for mobile devices called Skullgirls. Mobile. Skullgirls Mobile is a fighting game you can play on your smartphone or iPad for free. Developed by Hidden Variable and with some help and an OK from Autumn Games, we got a whole new brand freaking way to experience Skullgirls. Instead of getting smixed, teabagged, and downright disrespected in the main version, you get to collect, level up, and spend money to win in the mobile version. With easy auto combo gameplay, all you gotta do is slap your screen until your opponent dies. Now this version has included RPG elements into its formula by turning your beloved Skullgirls fighters into collectible cards. Each card has a rank starting at bronze, silver, gold, and then finally, diamond. Each card also holds a certain element, those being either air, water, fire, light, or dark, each one having a weakness to one another. And depending on the matchup, you either get an elemental bonus, which gives you a 20% damage increase on your attacks, or an elemental penalty, which does the exact opposite. Each card also has a skill tree you can upgrade to increase a bunch of basic stats, combo extenders, and that fighter's signature and marque, 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 abilities. And each fighter card has their own unique signature abilities, with some being good, some being meh, and others just being straight up game breaking. And you can either level up your fighter by doing fights, or sacrificing cards you could care less to have to buff up the one you like the most. Then, when a fighter hits their level cap, that's when you have the option to evolve them into a higher ranking card. And what's better is all the skills you unlocked on the skill tree are still intact, so you should always evolve a fighter if you can. Then you have character moves you can equip on your fighter to customize how they fight, and even set it up to do some really flashy stuff. Moves also have levels ranking from bronze to silver, and then gold being the highest. You have the regular command moves and your blockbusters, but then there are the blockbusters with the skulls on each corner, which pretty much means ignore everything and kill your opponent. These are unblockable specials that do massive damage and often inflict some type of debuff or even multiple debuffs that kind of just makes you want to smash your phone if you're on the receiving end. And there are a good bit of status ailments in this game, like so many I, I can't even talk about them all right now. Just know that Doom is probably the worst debuff to have in my opinion. Like you just have a timer reminding you when your character is about to get deleted from the fight. But debuffs aside, one of the coolest things I find about this game though, is when people just straight up flex their collection with one another. I mean like, this is pretty much a card game, and people are very proud about any type of collection they own. And I've seen some top quality decks, and you know, it, it, it made me feel some type of way. Because these people got some outstanding shit, and here I am, scratching my head, Looking at my pathetic collection of two gold fighters and silvers, all no higher than level 28, mind you. My pockets, empty. My bank account, a f***ing joke. You know, I, I just I just sit there in utter disbelief at the fact that I'll never have a cool collection like Dickphilia underscore 69. Then, from out of nowhere, hidden variables all like, I got you, homie. And they sent me some words of encouragement and the greatest care package of all time. Okay, soul sister. I really want the, 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 the shadow Fukua one. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get that though. It's over. Oh my god! It was my early Christmas, and my collection became flooded with fighters strong enough to take on that one stupid gold. That's all, folks. Peek our card with a goddamn evade buff. No, don't you, don't you do it. And you stay right there. Yes, you fucking idiot. That's what you get. Now. Finally, play out the rest of Squiggly's story in advanced mode. Oh yeah, uh, forgot to tell you guys, this game also has a story mode. Skullgirls Mobile has its own little story plot where you, the player, are trained to become a black egret under Princess Parasol's command. And in doing so, you investigate all around Kannapolis looking for clues of a potential threat to the kingdom and to stop the Skullgirl Marie. I think. 
I, I don't I don't really know the story is still in development but each arc consists of chapters in which you get to interact with the SG cast and speak to everyone who didn't make the cut as DLC in each chapter you'll need to complete an area full of AI fights until you reach the boss Winning these fights will give you experience and some bonus goodies, but you get a really hefty reward for completing chapters as well. Also, experience points don't just go to your fighter card, it also goes to your player level, and when your player level goes up by one, you get even more rewards, and all of your fighters' energies are refilled. Most chapters have difficulty modes ranging from basic, to advanced, to expert, and then rage. The higher the rank, the better the rewards. Now, the mobile game story, you know, is pretty neat. But where the real shit goes down are the origin stories, the only story all loreheads care about, myself included. Here you get to learn about characters' backstories we never got to see in the main game, like in Second Encore when Marie said to Philia, Philia, we meet again, but why? And Philia's all like, huh? And you're all like, huh? Did you forget about it? Fast forward to the release of Philia's origin story, and it's like 3 a.m., and you see that Marie met smug little Philia when she was trying to kill her family, but let them go because of Doggo Samson. And then it's like, oh man, so that's how they met before. Wow, that's crazy. Then Automo shoots Philia. The origin stories are great. You can get to see where all our beloved SG characters started out and what led them to the way they are in the main game today. Some stories are okay, and others are just like, oh. And we still haven't seen every character's origin story yet. They're still in development, but I'm super interested to see Misfortunes and Eliza's. Now, I, I don't really want to spoil any others because I'd rather you download the game and find out for yourself, but just know there is a catch. You have to have a player level of at least 20 or higher, and have at least one fighter based on its respectable origin. Now, you think that's a lot to ask. But it actually isn't, because you could level up pretty fast doing the main story, and to upgrade your fighter even faster, that's where daily events come in. Daily events are just character specific game nodes that are mainly for unlocking moves and skill points for that well, specific character. Each character event only lasts for a limited time of the week, pretty much one day of each week, hence why it's called daily events. Of course, the higher the difficulty level, the better the rewards. And honestly, these events aren't too hard, but it can get a bit crazy at expert and higher. It's consistent on what days each character has, like Double and Cerebella are every Friday, and Big Band and Robo Fortune are every Tuesday, etc. You pretty much get the point. Um, also, while you're not playing, the game will remind you what events are going on that day via a notification on your cellular device. Now, one event that's there at all times is Brain Drain's Accursed Experiments, where the only difficulty available is the Get f difficulty. So you need a deep, deep, DEEP understanding of this game before you just plunge yourself into this void of despair. But if you're successful, you can get a decent amount of skill points for every fighter and then some. So, um, you know, good luck to you if that's something you want to go for, because uh, me personally, I do not want to do that. I've tried. It did, uh, it, it did not end well for me. Showtime. Jesus Christ, dude! I didn't even get to play! Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go! What could I do? What could I possibly do? If I attack, I'm about to die. But I'm gonna die. Fuck! Prize fights. These are a series of events where you fight against teams designed by other players, but you also create a team to throw out there into the world too. Each offensive and defensive victory earns you points in which you need to reach milestones to earn prizes. Milestone rewards usually include skill points, money, theonite, and even some move relics. The amount of points you gain also applies to your ranking, which helps you obtain ranking rewards. Basically, you're pretty much competing with people all around the world to get to the top of the ranking board, and wherever you end up on that board, you get some goodies. And once the event you participated in ends, the game will send you rank rewards in the mail, if you made the board, and other times it'll just tell you to get good. There are multiple prize fight events that go on throughout the month. You got character prize fights for every playable character in the game, elemental prize fights, Medici prize fights, special prize fights which occur on specific holidays, and flex your moves prize fights which you can only use blockbusters to do damage, and some of these prize fights can last for like three days, some last for like one to two days. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure if there is a specific order to how these events rotate, but I can guarantee whatever event is available, it's worth your time to do it for some easy rewards and to build up currency in Theonite. Rift Battles uh, So, this is a pretty straightforward game mode. I mean, like, in a nutshell, you go through game nodes created by other players, but 
before you can do anything, you have to create your own. So, you pick your strongest fighters, punch them somewhere on the board, hmm. add some catalysts to give your defenses some busted shit, and there, you've created a game node for other players to challenge, and now, you're ready to do the same. To battle player nodes, you have to spend a rift ticket, and once you start, you can only use a fighter once per rift battle. You also have a limited number of times you can hold that L before they give you the boot. But, beating player nodes will earn you rift coins and bragging rights. I mean, when I first tried it out, I was kind of sweeping through player nodes left and right, not to brag, you know what I'm saying, but I did earn the rights to brag because I kind of whooped their ass. The first three I played was a cakewalk. It was so easy, the game was just like, alright buddy, okay, I see you, good job getting past the tutorial stage. Now, fight some people that have money and time, and bam, my first goal to opponent. Zippy 036. I didn't think too much of it. I thought it would be hard, but it wasn't nothing I couldn't handle. So, I just started up the node, and the first fighter I ran into was an 11k Diamond Jotaro Man. Off the gate, was an 11k fighter, just sitting there. This was the first fight. This was the warm-up round. Like, I, I'm, I'm baffled right now. Th this is his warm-up round. Like, I'm not even at a level to pass this man to take on the rest of his goons. And you're really telling me that this isn't even his final form. Alright, f*** it. I charge in without any regrets, and I get absolutely fried. He went through me like diarrhea. But you know what? It's alright. It's cool. It was my first loss. So I brush it off, and I try the next gold player. And it turns out, I got the same result as last time. And after those two gold players sent me and my entire deck to the Shadow Realm, it made me realize, like, shit, I'm a rookie. So I should just stay in my rank and build up from there. So I finally take on the other rookie pair with the goals that clap my cheeks. And when I accessed his or her node and saw his or her defenses, I immediately knew that I am even lower than a rookie. So anyway, that's Rift Battles. Now, there are also other small but really cool things that this game offers as well. Like the daily logins, which is this game's version of attendance. Show up, get rewards. Simple. But, daily logins reset the first day of every month, so just take like 12 seconds to boot up the game a day and get some free stuff. You also got daily missions, in which the game gives you small challenges to do to earn Theonite easily. These challenges reset every 24 hours. They also recently added accolades, which are challenges within a specific category that you can complete at any time to earn even more shit. Another is deployments, in which you send out any fighter or fighters of your choice to tackle the missions currently available. But remember, whatever fighters you send out won't be available in other game modes until they finish with their deployment. You also have the in-game shop, where you can purchase goods with your in-game currency. And if you don't like what you see, you can always hit refresh all until you get something of interest but at a price of 25 Theonite. Then, you have the actual store, which you spend actual money to get items and starter packs. There's also a chat you can access at the top of your screen, which you can use to vent to other players on how much you hate that one annoying team you ran in a prize fight that kind of sabotaged your whole entire streak. You also have a friends list in which you send gifts to one another because you don't really care about the friends, you just want the gifts. Then there's the viewing parlor in which you watch an ad to help the devs get ad revenue, something every indie company and YouTuber needs to pretty much exist. And the devs even know how annoying it can be to watch ads. That's why they give you free stuff for just watching. And believe it or not, there's a training mode in this game. Yep, that you heard that right, a training mode. It's for, you know, training. <laughs> you test out fighters moves and increase your finger strength. Then after that, you can just go ahead and jump the versus and or PvP and fight other human beings from around the globe, showing off your advanced thumb tapping skills. And uh, well, that that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now, everything I said is pretty much only the surface level of what this game has to offer. It's a very, very, very in-depth mobile game that does require strategy, time, uh, a hefty amount of money depending on how seriously you take it, and effort to get to those higher rankings. And for what it is, this game's really freaking good. Now, me saying this is a big deal for me because personally, I despise mobile games. I can't stand them half the time. So when they announced Skullgirls Mobile, I didn't really think too much of it. But I downloaded it anyway because I love me some Skullgirls. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when I played it, I was just like, yo, this game's actually kind of lit. So, like, a lot of times, gotcha games give off that pay to win vibe, like 90% to 100% of the time. 
but I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really get that much with SG Mobile. But that's probably because I just be chilling and I mainly be playing like the game for its origin stories. It, it is still a gotcha game, so they won't shy away from throwing all their package deals at you when they have the chance. Still, you know, I love me some Skullgirls, no matter what they do with it. I'm always gonna be curious to look into how they expand the world, and you know, by showing our love and support for the SG series as a whole, the dev team will always try and return the favor to the community by giving us any of the f stars holy shit she is almost here my guys 2021 is like freaking three or four months away she's almost on mobile too she's oh! so yeah if you just want to kill some pastime at work during lunch or a family cookout you don't want to be a part of download school girls it's completely free it's a lot of fun also don't forget about second encore you should play that too play and support all things school girls all right goodbye get out of here uh i gotta go save some deal night for annie's inevitable release